I, I am extremely out in left field with this, along with people like Sam Harris, a few other philosophers, in terms of absolutely hard determinism and hard incompatibilism. I simply, when I read any philosopher, and unfortunately, when reading a few neuroscientists who should know better, when they say, yes, 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 it's deterministic, we are nothing more than our molecules and atoms and subatomic particles. We are nothing more than the biophysical rules of Earth and physical rules of the universe, all of that. Yet, somehow, at the end, you can still squeeze free will out of there. And when you look closely at the arguments they make, they fall in certain categories. Either they decide all we care about is whether somebody intended to do something in this moment or not, and we have no interest in their history. We have no interest in the fact that every moment before that was the outcome of every moment before that moment and within a biological framework. Or they'll say, well, if it looks like there was no free will in this person's action just now, there is free will, but it happened before, it happened before, or it happened in a different part of the brain, or it didn't happen inside the brain, it happens between brains in social interactions. And these are all these styles of arguments um, that people make. And I'm not trying to sound sarcastic, but when you look closely at what every one of these compatibilist philosophers is saying when they say, yes, 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 of course, we are nothing more than molecules. Yes, yes, um, we're existing in the 21st century. We're not medieval alchemists. Yes, yes, but somehow there's free will. And the explanation always involves some kind of magic. Like if it's not, you know, it's some kind of, sophistry, it's some kind of logic trick, it's some kind of hand waving, it's some kind of magic. And an awful lot of these times, what these people are saying is, no, 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 of course, we're not saying that something happens for no reason. We're saying it happens for magical reasons. And that's no better. Um, I mean, it's by now, sarcastically, I can, a huge percentage of these papers from these philosophers talking about free will who were trying to incorporate neuroscience, basically their paper comes down to three sentences. First sentence, wow, neuroscience is discovering such interesting things. Second sentence, wow, some of these things are making us question free will and agency and moral responsibility and raises the possibility that we have to rethink everything. Third sentence, no, not really. And like that's, that's basically their stance. They, they could take the logical steps all the way out that you see how fetal environment has something to do with the adult that you are. You see something about childhood nutrition has something to do with it. You see something about this morning's hormone levels, last year's trauma, what smells there are in this room. Everything from one second ago to a lifetime ago, all of those are shaping behavior. And somehow they need to pull free will out of that because I think it makes people very, very uncomfortable and on the edge of panic to have to confront the fact that we are nothing more or less than biological organisms.